The purpose of this video is to give a brief overview of early literacy in order to support teachers who work with emergent readers. My name is Laura Smart. I'm the district TOA for English Language Arts, and I am going to be sharing with you today a little bit about early literacy. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the progression of early literacy and learn about some specific strategies that we can use to support our students at each level in their reading development. So as you can see in this progression chart, um, phonemics is an auditory skill. Uh, then we move students uh, into letter sound correspondence, sight word acquisition, basic decoding um, with CVC words and decodable text, and then slowly moving students into um, reading less controlled text. So you can think of the students that you work with and think about maybe where uh, each of your students falls in this progression of early literacy in order to think about what skills they might need in order to move to the next step in the progression. First, we're going to look at phonological and phonemic awareness. Uh, phonological awareness is the awareness that oral language is composed of smaller units, such as spoken words and syllables, uh, including rhyming and onset and rhyme. So when we think about phonological awareness, we think about it being the sounds of the language. So I'm going to share with you a handout um, that you'll have access to in the resources with some ideas on how we can build phonological awareness with our students. This is the very first step of literacy. So I'm gonna open the handout for you so you can take a look at it. Um, when we start, you'll see um, the first activity is recognizing rhyme. So um, children will be trying to identify which words rhyme. So this is the first level of rhyming in phonological awareness um, that students can recognize whether or not two words rhyme. So here's an example of how the teacher might deliver a lesson. Remember, these are um, all auditory skills. So you um, wouldn't be holding up picture cards or anything. It would just be auditory. So you might use your hand or your arm or your body somehow to kind of um, help the students to follow along with the lesson. Uh, so for example, looking at this one, I went, might say to my students, listen to the words log, cat, hog, which two words rhyme? And then I would want my students to maybe repeat those words. So we do it again, um, log, cat, hog. And you'll see that um, we would want the students to be able to identify which of those two words rhyme. And the next step after recognizing rhyme is for students to be able to actually produce rhyming words. So you would tell the student, um, tell me a word that rhymes with bug. And they would have to tell you a word that rhymes. Moving into um, another part of phonological awareness is counting syllables. Uh, when we ask students to count the syllables in a spoken word. So for example, uh, in the sample here, the teacher would say the word is elephant. And then the teacher would stretch out that word, um, pausing on each syllable, and or they could clop on each syllable. So the word is elephant, elephant, and the students could clap along and count the syllables as the teacher is modeling that. Um, they could also stomp or jump on one leg um, or jump on each syllable. After being able to count the syllables that the teacher stretching out, the next step might be um, to ask the students to blend syllables together. So asking them, um, so your model might be um, as the teacher, my turn, teacher. And then you would say your turn and the students would do it, teacher. 
and then you would say, okay, put it together, teacher, and put it together, teacher. So you would show them how to blend those two syllables together. So another way in the screen, you might do it is like this, teacher, put it together, teacher, um, is another way that you might uh, model it for the students. And then the next part would be segmenting syllables. So in this case, um, the children are gonna be asked to separate the word into different syllables. So if I said the word is tomato, the students would clap it out. Um, so what are the syllables in the word tomato? Tomato. So you would want the students then to segment those syllables. And you could also ask them to count the syllables. And then the third um, activity for building phonological awareness is blending onset and rhyme. So onset and rhyme is um, kind of breaking the word up into little chunks. So um, we're gonna be blending those syllables together to make the words. So blending and segmenting um, using those chunks. So not each individual letter, but the chunks um, or the syllables. So I might say my turn, sp in, your turn, sp in, and then we'd say put it together, and the students would say spin. So I'm gonna do that um, for you in the screen. So we would do like this, sp in, spin, or sp in, spin. And so the students would practice putting it together. Um, then when they're um, working on segmenting, I might say what it is, and then they have to break it up. So the word is man, and then the students would say man, and then I would say break it up, and they would say mm, an. Um, another way you can do it is like this. The word is man. What's the word? Man. Um, and then break it up. Mm, an. So you can see uh, in that sample that I just shared that, oh, let me go back and share my screen. Sorry about that. Okay, here we are. Okay, so um, moving back into our presentation, you can see that those are just some ways that you can use to build phonological awareness with your students. Once students have a good understanding of phonological awareness, they will be ready to start building on their phonemic awareness. So when thinking about individual sounds of letters. Um, so when we're moving into phonemic awareness, um, with phonological awareness, it was really the rhyming, the syllables, the onset and rhyme. Now we're talking about each individual sound that uh, we that we make when we're um, saying a word. And so when thinking about those individual sounds of the letters, we really want to model proper um, pronunciation for our students. We also want to make sure that when we're pronouncing the sounds, um, we are cutting those sounds short and teaching students to cut them short. So not adding that uh sound to the end of the sound. Um, so for example, um, maybe when you first learned the sounds of the alphabet, um, you might have hear people say, buh, or kuh, or duh. We want to teach students how to cut it short. So it would be b, k, d. So we want to teach them how to cut it short. So I have this little video here that's going to show you um, and give you an opportunity to listen to what some of the sounds would uh, sound like um, when you're pronouncing them correctly. So. I'm just, uh, this video is for your reference. I'm just going to show a little bit of it, um, but then I'll also include the link in our resources. A, apple, a. B, bat, b. C, cat, k. D, dog, d. E, egg, f. F, 
fish, f, g, gum, g, h, hat, h, i, igloo, i, j, j, jug, j. Okay, so that gives you an example of how we would cut the sound short. So if you'd like, you can uh, click on our presentation slides and the resources and watch the rest of this video in order to hear how you can pronounce those sounds um, by cutting them short. A, apple. Um, now um, we're going to move into talking a little bit more specifically about what you can do to build phonemic awareness for your students. So you'll see here um, there's eight different routines that can be used to build uh, phonemic awareness for students. Um, remember, this is still an auditory skill, so you're not going to be showing the students the printed letter, but we are going to be focusing on uh, one sound for each letter. So let's take a closer look at some of the suggestions for delivery of each of these routines. So in um, our slideshow, if you click where it says building phonemic awareness, that will take you to an additional handout. This will also be available in your resources. So um, in the eight different activities that you can use to build students phonemic awareness. The first one you'll see is phoneme identity. And so the purpose of phoneme identity is that um, children can see it. You can see if children recognize the same sound in different words. So you might uh, start with saying uh, three different words. Uh, for example, fix, fall, fun. And then the, um, you would say your turn and the students would say, fix, fall, fun. And then you would say, what sound is the same at the beginning of fix, fall, fun? And then because you asked for this down, the sound, students would respond. If you were doing phoneme isolation with students, uh, the purpose would be that they would be able to uh, recognize individual sounds in a word. So in this example, uh, the teacher might say, my turn, van, your turn. And then the students would say, van. And then the teacher might ask, what's the first sound at the beginning of van? And then the students would respond, v. Notice how I'm cutting it short. I'm not saying, v, but, v. Uh, the next one is phoneme categorization, and you'll see in this one, the purpose is for the um, children to recognize the word in a set of three or four words um, and be able to identify the odd sound or the sound that doesn't belong. Um, so, for example, uh, the teacher might say bus, bug, rug. And then this, they would say, your turn. And the students would say, bus, bug, rug. And then um, um, I did that wrong. Sorry, let me go again. The words are bus, bun, rug. And then the children would say, bus, bun, rug. And then the teacher would say, which word doesn't belong? And the students would be able to hopefully identify that rug is the word that didn't belong because it doesn't start with the v sound. For phoneme blending, you'll see the purpose is for students to be able to listen and um, combine each sound in order to make a word. And so um, we might say, listen to the sounds and then say them fast. My turn. B and then what's the word and then hopefully the students would be able to do it you can also do it on your arm like this B -I -G. big B -I -G. big and so you'll see how um, we could model that for students and then the next one is phoneme segmentation 
where the purpose is for students to break apart the word into separate sounds. So um, for example, the teacher might say, how many sounds are in the word grab? And then the children could do it on their arm, grab, g, r, a, b, grab. So you can see there's four sounds. Um, some teachers have the students actually count them as they go like this. G, r, a, b, grab. The next one is phoneme addition, where we're asking students to add a sound to make a new word. So for example, we can say to students, uh, my turn, park, your turn, park. And then you might say, add, the, add, an, add a s to the beginning of park, s park, spark, s park, spark. And the students would practice putting it together. Um, similarly with phoneme substitution, you're asking students to take a sound that's already in a word and change it to a different sound in order to make a different word. So it might sound something like this. My turn, bug, your turn, bug. Change the g in the word bug. Change the g to s. And then hopefully the students would say, B, a, s, bus. Or if they can do it fast, they might um, just say bus. And then phoneme deletion would be asking them to remove a sound from a current word. So for example, my turn, pants, your turn, pants. What is pants without the p? What is pants without the p? So I might say, what is pants without the p? p pants. So what am I left with? So those are just a couple of examples to help you when you're delivering phonemic awareness routines for your students. I'm gonna go ahead and close that handout and bring us back to our original presentation. So you'll see that there's a star next to both blending and segmenting. And the reason for that is these two routines are um, the most effective um, for teaching students emergent reading. So we really wanna make sure we're doing all of these um, routines with our students, but really spending a good amount of time on having them have opportunities to blend and segment words. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share a video with you and I'm going to um, have you take a look at it. Um, it's a video of one of our spotlight teachers, Erin Grable, doing some of these routines with her kindergarten students. And I want you to notice as you're watching the video how she uses her hands and her body to help support students and add in scaffolds when needed um, in order to support them. And I also want you to notice how she makes it fun and engaging for the students like a game. So this um, is two different routines that we're gonna look at. Uh, one of them Erin calls Say It Fast and the other one she calls Break It Down. So see if you can identify which of the uh, different phonemic awareness routines Erin is doing with her students. London's ready, London's ready. London's ready. It is time to say it fast. Yay. Say it fast. Ready? My turn. My turn. K at. Cat. Cat. D at. D at. D D D D D D at. D at. D at. D at. She brings in her arm during that time to offer that additional scaffold for students. Good job. Okay, now we are going to break it down. Get your arm ready. Okay, here we go. My turn. Matt, your turn. Matt. Matt. Let's break it down. Let's count the sounds. Ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many? Mm -hmm. 
How many sounds do you hear? Three. Three. So in that, in that video, Erin uh, was doing both blending and segmenting with her students. The next video um, is a first grade intervention class where the teacher is using uh, something called the rubber band strategy to model blending for students. And so you'll notice uh, some teachers even actually use a real rubber band for this, showing students how we um, break up the sounds and blend them together. Other uh, teachers might even use a slinky or some other um, object in order to imitate that rubber band. I'm going to show you uh, just a quick part of this video. I want us to watch me. Ready? Watch me. Okay, your turn. Arms up. Here we go. So in that video, uh, Randy was going over with her students, um, again, the blending and segmenting of sounds. So as students are strengthening their phonological and phonemic awareness, teachers can also start to incorporate phonics and word recognition into their lessons. So the difference between um, phonemic awareness and phonics, um, remember phonemic awareness is the focus on individual sounds in the spoken word and that the sounds work together to make words. Phonics is the relationship between sounds and letters. So the letter sound correspondence. So when we actually bring out the printed letter and put it in front of a student and we talk about the sound that the letter makes, um, that's when we start to move into phonics. So our Wonders curriculum offers sound spelling cards in order to help you introduce the sound letter correspondence for students. Uh, they also um, have word building activities in the Wonders program that you can use to help um, support students with the phonemic awareness and moving into the phonics. Uh, whiteboards are a great tool to use with students when you're having them build or, and or write words. Uh, so here's an example of one of the lessons you might see in Wonders where it says um, that you're going to have the students first listen and blend the sounds um, to make the word, but you could also ask the students to write the word. So that would be the next step um, moving into phonics. So you can see how phonemic awareness and phonics are directly related together. I'm gonna show you now um, that first grade intervention class again, and just show you a little bit about what it might look like um, to move from that phonemic awareness lesson into a phonics lesson where you're actually having the students write the word with you. What letter do you hear at the beginning of hut? By your neighbor. Oh my goodness, how many sounds are in the word hut? Let's check. What sound is it made? What sound? Uh, uh, uh. It has 
that's all freestanding. That's freestanding. Free all right. You guys are ahead of me. All right. So, so let's keep moving. What part do I? Your art job is to disassemble. Stack and disassemble. They're going to pick up on the 27th. Okay, so in that video, you saw Randy um, working with her intervention students, and um, this is a first grade intervention class where she was working with um, that phonemic awareness and then moving into the phonics lesson and having students build words on their whiteboard. The next thing we're going to talk about is word recognition. So in addition to learning phonics, students also need to learn high frequency words because not all words can be sounded out. So um, when we talk about high frequency words or word recognition, we're talking about learning to memorize those words um, so they become automatic when we see them. So there's um, many words that we see often in beginning texts that students are going to run into that can't be decoded, and so the students would want to um, learn those words by sight. The Wonders curriculum has high frequency word cards and resources that teachers can use to introduce and review high frequency words with students. There are also sight word readers that you can use in order to uh, have students practice reading those words in context. In addition to what the curriculum offers, starting in kindergarten, our students are introduced to 101 sight words in order to support them with beginning reading. And actually, even in TK, um, we start to introduce students to these words. Uh, there are additional resources available on the curriculum and instruction website related to the rainbow words. So I'm going to show you how to get there now. So from Symbolu, if you go to the curriculum and instruction website, and then you scroll down to where it says wonders, this is our ELA ELD support site um, that has additional resources um, that are connected to the curriculum. If you go into um, down here where it says grade level resources and click where it says kindergarten and actually um, under TK as well, you'll see um, the zip drive of rainbow word resources. So there are separate lists um, for teachers to work with students on. There's flashcards, there's um, notes to parents explaining what the rainbow words are. So this is a really good resource. Um, you do have to download this. This is a zip drive, so it will actually download to your computer. So um, just keep that in mind when you're opening that up. Okay, coming back to our presentation. Give me just a minute. Okay, there it is. Um, we're going to talk briefly about decoding now. So decoding is um, being able to say the sounds and be able to sound out um, consonant vowel consonant words or um, short phonetic words. So in this case, um, there are some resources in the curriculum that Wonders offers uh, in order to help students. Um, as they're learning to put together those sounds, we can work on decodable passages with them in order to help them practice decoding. So there are two passages per week related to the phonics instruction for the week. So this is an example of the week that you're working on the initial H sound. You can see um, that there is a decodable packet passage that will help students be able to practice words with that initial sound. Uh, there's also decodable pack passages um, in the um, I think it, uh, in the kindergarten, first and second grade classrooms. Um, this is an example of one that's working on long vowels. 
In addition to the decodable passages, K2 teachers have class sets of decodable readers that you may have or be able to borrow in order to work more specifically on phonics and decoding with students. So again, when we're working on that initial H sound, um, there are stories uh, that are in the decodable readers that would help students practice reading those sounds in context and um, putting together those words. And that's all I have for you today. I hope that you really enjoyed this video. And if you ever have any questions regarding early literacy or anything else related to English language arts, please feel free to reach out to me. My email is laura.smart at omsd.net. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.